Hey everyone, welcome to this course on application security. My name is Derek Fisher and I'm happy to be able to walk you through application security and security in the software development lifecycle. We're going to cover a lot of different topics in this class. So we're going to be talking about uh, analysis tools, uh, threat modeling, vulnerability management, risk assessments, the OWASP top 10, SANS 25, and everything in between. So we're going to cover a lot of ground in this. I hope you find the information in this course valuable and I look forward to presenting these topics to you. So. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I have uh, 20 plus years uh, experience in engineering, both in the hardware side and software side. Uh, the past eight, nine years I've been in the security space, um, both as a, or as a leader, as an instructor, uh, as an architect. Um, so I have a bit of experience in this um, space. Uh, if you wanna look me up on LinkedIn, I'd be happy to connect with you. So feel free to look me up. And with that, let's get into uh, the software development life cycle. So we're gonna lay some groundwork for uh, what actually the software development lifecycle is and how security plays into that. So when we look at the SDLC or the software development lifecycle, there's several different uh, ways uh, that this cycle works. Uh, and you'll see some variations on this, but generally you have uh, these, these concepts. So you have a requirements phase or um, uh, analysis phase. You have a design phase, a development phase or an implementation phase. Uh, a testing phase, and then an operations or, or evolution phase. So in that requirements phase, you're really gathering up all the requirements from the client of what it is that they want to build. So if you're building a, a website, the client's going to provide you with the information of what it is that they want. Then you're going to go into the design phase where you're going to start picking different technology uh, stacks that you're going to work with. You're going to make some architectural decisions. And then the implementation phase, well, that's the fun phase. That's where you're actually writing code. Once the code is written, you go into a testing phase, and that's where you uh, take your code that you produce and you run it through some uh, tests to make sure that it actually, number one, works and that it meets the client's, uh, uh, what the client wanted. Uh, and you may layer in some security uh, testing there as well. And then in that evolution phase, you know, in the operation phase, is once you push that code out into a production environment, you're going to have some monitoring going on and making sure that, you know, number one, there's no uh, defects that are found in production and that any issues that come up uh, are then fed back into your requirements uh, phase where, uh, or the pre-design phase where you're taking that, uh, the bugs or the defects that are, that are found in production and you're putting it back through that life cycle again where you're going through some design work, you're doing some development work, you're going through some testing and then you push out the production. So from that initial uh, requirements phase, a little bit deeper dive here, you know, you're getting those, again, requirements and goals from the client. Uh, you're taking those requirements, you're doing some analysis. So you're making sure, do you understand what those requirements are? Uh, and then you want to have um, an agreement with the client to make sure that what it is that they're saying in the requirements uh, or, you know, what they uh, what they want uh, is is being captured appropriately in the requirements. Now, the important thing is that the client knows what they want, but they don't know how. So your job is to figure out how that gets done. The client just wants to tell you, what it is that they want to have done. And then you want to make sure that the scope is agreed upon between you and the client. So uh, you're going to look at the scope uh, of the uh, or the requirements, make sure that uh, the boundaries and the scope of that uh, end product is going to meet uh, both the client's needs and also uh, make sure that you can actually achieve those. So the scope is defined, agreed upon. And then internally, you're going to take uh, those requirements. You're going to prioritize the requirements and say, you know, maybe if you have just a simple example, maybe you have 15 requirements and you're going to uh, the top five or five of them are critical ones that the client can't you know, negotiate on. And then maybe a, a handful of them are less of a priority and then some of them are nice to have. So you want to then prioritize, well, obviously the ones that the client wants uh, the most, those are going to get the most amount of attention. Then you're going to slot your resources and make sure that you have the appropriate amount of developers and architects and testers uh, associated with making sure that the that the work actually gets done. So then during the design phase, uh, this is where you're going to start looking at uh, maybe making some wireframes. You're going to do some screen layouts. You might even do some prototype work that you allow the client to take a look at and make sure that they uh, agree uh, that you're heading in the right direction. And, and at that point, you might be able to make some changes if the client you know finds issues with it. You're also gonna detail some of the design decisions that you're making, whether it's from the architecture point of view or the technology point of view. You wanna make sure that you document that information during that design phase. But this is really where you're laying the framework uh, for what it is that you're gonna develop. And then the fun part, you're gonna take all that information that you got from the requirements phase and from the design phase, 
And this is where you sit down and you and you write code. So uh, you take all the input in from those first two phases, uh, and then you create some some code that that hopefully works. Uh, but if it doesn't work, uh, then you go into the testing phase, and this is where you're going to start identifying any of the issues where maybe the code uh, is having some uh, issues with running, or maybe the code that you wrote doesn't work in the overall system. So uh, this isn't all encompassing, but there are several different ways of, of testing code. So you have the static analysis, which is just looking at the code as it sits. So it's not running code, it's just looking at the text of the code. And it's looking for things like code quality, you may have it configured to look for security issues. Um, and then there's also dynamic analysis, which is actually looking at the code while it's running. Um, and we're going to get more into these things as we talk about um, some of the security analysis tools that are available. But some of you that may be developers may be familiar with some of these other concepts uh, around testing. So unit testing is looking at very small uh, code changes. So it could be in a function or a method. It's going to look at those. Um, the unit test is going to be the smallest you know, method of, of testing. Uh, and then you have integration, interface, and systems tests, which gets more and more um, broad in terms of what it covers from a testing perspective. The system test is looking at the code that you just changed. What is the impact of that code across the entire system? So that could be uh, not just in the application that you're working in, but also across all the touch points that that application has. So then when you get into the operation phase, um, you're going to uh, hopefully have monitoring out there to, that determines whether uh, defects are found. Uh, and if they are found, uh, that you have a way of taking those defects in and making sure that um, that you have a way of, of bringing them in back into the design phase. Uh, you're going to create a patch, you're going to build your software, put it back through the testing, then push it out to production. So it's really a method of, you know, understanding our, if there's defects out there, how do we get that back into our development process and get get a fix pushed out to production. So from a security point of view, and this is really what we're going to talk about in the rest of this class, is the the secure S, the secure SDLC uh, fits nicely into the into the regular software development lifecycle. Where from that design perspective and requirements perspective, you're you're looking at the security frameworks that already exist. You're looking at the standards and guidelines that already that are already out there. So things like OWASP and NIST, uh, we're going to talk a lot about those uh, throughout this course. And we're going to weave in a lot of their uh, standards and guidelines into this course. And then in the design phase, you're going to look at things like threat modeling. Again, we're going to cover threat modeling in this course as well. But you know that's where you're identifying the different threats that you may have uh, that, that are um, applicable to your uh, system or your application that you're building. <clears throat> and then in the testing phase, uh, not just static analysis and dynamic analysis, but we're going to also talk about um, interactive testing. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the other tools that aren't necessarily testing tools, but are protection tools like uh, runtime uh, security protection, WAFs, and so forth. And then in that evolution or operation stage, we're going to uh, talk about uh, some of the vulnerability management uh, techniques that can be used. Uh, and also risk rating. So uh, getting a vulnerability in from perhaps a uh, external party, uh, you want to be able to take that vulnerability information and put it in the context of your application and build a risk rating around that. So is this really, you know, the vulnerability that you get from a third party? Uh, is that really something that we need to, you know, um, is there really something actionable there? Uh, you don't know that until you do a risk rating on it. So again, we're going to talk about all these concepts and more uh, throughout this class. So thank you for joining me in this lesson and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.